All right, let's look at numbers 11 and 12 here. For number 11, it's asking us to, it's given us a frequency table, grouped frequency table, and it's asking us to draw a histogram and a pie chart, which should be pretty straightforward. You select the table, you go to insert, and then you go to the histogram area, and you do a 2D or a 3D histogram. Uh, let's make a 2D one here. So here's the histogram. And you can connect the columns. Let's see. You got 0 to 2500, 2500 to 5000, 5000 to. It didn't do the last column for us, so let's delete that. And oh, I didn't select the last column, you see. There you go. So press insert. Watch out for that in case you forgot to select an additional row. Very important, now they're all here. So right click on the columns, format data series and kill the gap width. A uh, couple of percentages so that you could actually see it. And there's the histogram. Make it a little smaller. There's your histogram. Now for the pie chart, again you select the table. Don't forget to select the entire table. Go to insert and this time go to the pie chart and do a pie chart. It's that simple. And there is your pie chart. So that does it for uh, number 11. Let's move on to number 12. It's asking us to do a stem and leaf plot. And it's given us the data values. As you recall from the lecture notes, if you have a number like 1325, Usually the right outmost digit, which is five, is the leaf, and everything else is the stem. So stem is usually the hard part, I mean, the bigger part of a number. So the way you do a stem and leaf plot is to organize your numbers in an increasing order, and I've done that. And then you have to organize them based on their stems. So you put the zeros, in other words, numbers that have a zero on their first position, Officially, if you look at it like one, if you look at it, the two digits, zero, one, zero, two, and then you got the ones, which are the 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, all the way to 19. Then you got the twos, the threes, and the fours. That's how you organize them. And your stems become your vertical numbers, so you put them like that. You draw a thicker line right there. It's just how do you do a stem and leaf plot. And then you basically line up the, uh, the leaves in front of each stem. So for stem zero, your leaves are one, two, five, seven, 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 eight. So you line them up right there, equally spaced. The leaves for one are zero, one, two, three, five, seven, eight, nine, nine. So you line them up here and so on and so forth. And once you're done doing it, and for four, let's say it's only zero. Once you're done doing it, if you notice, if you actually darken these columns or these rows it actually does look like a histogram uh, let me just make them darker so see if I actually make these columns darker and then you look at them sideways it actually does give you the feeling of a histogram and gives you information about the data set you're working with so you see See, there's a histogram sideways, so you obviously could see that the highest frequency numbers are the ones with the stem of 1. So there are more tens in these numbers than anything else. There are more tens than, than one-digit numbers. There are more tens than 20s. There are more tens than 30s. There are more tens than 40s. So it gives you information about the data set, and at the same time, you could actually see the values if you get rid of the coloring that you've done. So... So it's, it's nice, it has an advantage where you could see over the frequency table where you could see the actual data values, but then at the same time, uh, it has a disadvantage and that is if you have a lot of numbers, you see these, these, these rows will just extend on longer and longer and it will defeat the purpose. So it has its pluses and minuses. So if I get rid of these colors, you see, you can see all the numbers. But again, you can't do it for large data sets. So there's, there's the stem and leaf plot. Doing it for part B, um, doing it for part B. Again, I have a data set. I can organize them in an increasing order. And then just as before, if I look at my stems, I have a one, I have, I have, I have one, 
And then there's no twos, no threes, no fours. Then there's a five, no six, no seven. There's an eight and there's a nine. So you write down whether you have the stem or not. You have to write them down. But then if you don't have any twos, then just don't put anything in front of it. That just means you have no twos, you have no threes, you have no fours, you have one fives, which is a 57. You have no sixes, no 60s, no 70s. You have a number in the 80s and you have a number in the 90s. And these are the, the, the leaves. And there's a stem and leaf plot. So it's possible for you to have a lot of blank areas. You don't have those numbers, but you do have to present the numbers. And that's your uh, stem and leaf plot for part B, for number 12.